right, guys, a lot of YouTubers won't be able to show you this because I have a spare head right here. What's going on, kid family? Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, my 8th Gen Honda Civic with the R18A1 motor is taken apart for the most part right over here. We were just uh, installing a front lip kit on it. As you guys can see, the front lip. Surprisingly enough, it came out from a Lexus, but it seems like it's working. So, guys, this is going to be a long video. I'm warning you right now. And in this video, we are going to be doing a valve lash adjustment on the valves. Honda recommends to adjust the valves when they get noisy or every, I believe, like 70 or 75,000 miles. I'll post it right here with their actual recommendation. This car has about 88,000 miles and it has never had anything opened up before. So, it's time to adjust the valves during this quarantine season and to make it easier i'm going to take out the cowl i'm going to take out this part as you guys know these eighth gen civics don't give us much room in the back here and the reason is the design but you know by taking off this cowl we're going to increase a lot of room towards the back of the motor so later when we're adjusting the valves it's going to be easier so let's get first started by taking off the cowl if you don't want to take off the cowl just fast forward to when I'm starting to take everything else apart. But to take off the cowl, you're gonna have to undo some of these clips here. And these these fasteners are, are the ones that really make it a pain to take out. So there's one here. There's gonna be one over here. Again, I'll have to finesse with these. And then there's one right on this side. So once you take those off, we'll get back to you. All right, we have removed those three clips. Now we're gonna take off this seal. It may sound scary, but trust me, it's not. Let's flip that around here. And over here, we got the line for the windshield washer fluid. We're just gonna disconnect it right over here. You can see all these clips that hold it into place right here. We're just gonna set that aside right over here. Make sure you have all your clips that are supposed to hold it in place. All right, guys, at this stage of the game, you're gonna have to remove a 10 mil here, two 12 mils there. Same thing on the other side. One 10 mil, two 12 mil. 10 mil right over there in the back, as well as one over here. And we'll take this puppy off. So really what this is, it's pretty much like a strut bar connecting the two shock towers together. Let's pull this out. We're missing one more bolt. So there's three in the back. Let's wiggle it out and voila. Look how much space we just gained over here, ladies and gentlemen. This is a must if you're doing anything on the intake side of this motor of the R18. I mean, we just freed up a hell of a lot of space. So it took me about 10 to 15 minutes to remove that. You know, I highly recommend you remove that because it's gonna make the whole rest of the process a lot easier for you guys. At this point, it's game time. First things first, disconnect the negative battery terminal. Next, using a flathead, you're gonna straighten these plastic bolts into this position so we can remove this cover. Okay. The next step is using your 10 mil to remove this nut right here from the harness and this nut from the harness. Also using that 10 mil, you wanna take off the ignition coils right over here. This is a 10 mil socket. Okay, now you wanna wiggle them and pull them up. Wiggle, pull them up. Wiggle, pull them up. Wiggle, and pull up. Now you're gonna disconnect them. Now you're gonna remove them. And don't mess up the order that you're removing them in. Because you wanna go back to the same locations. Now you're gonna pull this clip right here away from you to the left so you can pull up the wiring harness off of this little clip now 
you're gonna remove all these clips here. This is the first clip you're gonna pull. Then you're gonna pull the second clip by pressing it and pulling out right there. And then lastly, you got a 10 mil again, which you wanna remove and pull up. Now, slide to the right. And again, one more time. There's a little clip here, so you gotta slide it to the right. And now you can move this whole wiring assembly off to the side. We can reinstall that 10 mil on the alternator here. And we are one step closer. All right, the next step is to remove these 10 mil bolts right here and right here. This is another harness. I'm gonna pull that wire. There we go. Pull that clip, pull that clip. And now your injectors are actually connected right over here. So I think that's as far as we're gonna go with taking this off. Just kind of pull it back a little bit so it's out of the way. Now you don't have to do this, but I actually undid all the fuel injector harnesses right here. So I can just kind of pull this whole thing back, which is gonna give me more space again if you need to use, uh, if you need the space for the bolts right there. Or later when you're gonna be using the valve lash adjustment tool to get in behind there. The next step guys, take some vice grips. We have to remove this clamp, it's the breather, and we're gonna have to pull it out. Loosen it up by turning it first, and then just pull. pull. All right, very good. At this point, there are plenty of 10 mils holding the area around the whole valve cover. So let's get started. Let's take all of these off. And typically guys, if you had the whole cowl right here, it would be very hard to get your 10 mil behind the motor right now. So again, you work a little bit more in the beginning, but you save yourself a lot of time at the end. So I highly recommend to remove that cowl. All right guys, so if you guys wanna make this work, you need to get yourself a valve lash adjustment tool such as this one. I have the angled one as you can see, and I believe the angled one in this application will be a lot better one than the straight ones. Anyway, here we have the specifications for the intake side. And for the intake side, you want 0.18 to 0.22 millimeters of clearance. So the first one, is actually right in between it's a 0.20 so this would be perfect I'll be happy if it's in between and then the second for the exhaust you want 0.23 millimeters or 0.27 millimeters and again the second valve right here that we have is a 0.25 so this is the for the exhaust side we're really going to be focusing on the second gauge for that intake side we're really going to be focusing on the first gauge as you guys can see the weather is getting really nasty out there which is nice because we got a nice uniform color over here but let's take the dipstick out next i'm going to try to show you guys at least the first cylinder how to adjust the valves on that okay anyway moment of truth guys this is the first time this valve cover is coming off this r18 motor 88,000 miles it's been using penzo platinum 0 20 or 520 all its life so let's check out the results here and i made sure i blew a lot of loose dirt away before i even attempted to take this off so let's go ahead and give it a shot there we have it looks pretty clean the oil is a little dirty because we haven't changed it in a long long time it's going to be due shortly but uh, let's put this to the side right now you see that gasket stayed on there the gasket stayed on there that's fine that gasket can stay on there less chances of dirt coming inside the motor again you want to be very clean at this point and at this stage of the game the metal looks fantastic not a lot of deposits or anything on the metal and this is where penzo platinum shines it doesn't gunk up the engine internals now let me show you guys another engine that i have right here all right guys let's take the valve cover off this motor and this thing, as you can see, you see all the dirt inside build up. It, it rarely has any clean surface area. This is what happens when you don't change your oil often enough, if you don't use a synthetic oil and whatnot. So I'm very happy at 88,000 miles how this engine is looking. And once we get finished with the valve lash adjustment, this thing is gonna be good 
for another 100,000 miles. So with these motors, you have four valves per cylinder. You have two intake valves here that need adjustment and two exhaust valves here that need an adjustment on cylinder one. Cylinder two is right here, two intake, two exhaust. Cylinder three, two intake, two exhaust. Cylinder four, two intake, to exhaust the camshaft have has different indicators on it which will represent which cylinder is at top dead center so you want to check this clearances of the valves with a cold engine overnight cold is the best my engine has been chilling here for the last four days i believe so it sure is cold now right here you can see up you can see the up symbol on the cam gear this has to be at 12 o'clock so in order to change that to 12 o'clock so cylinder one is in top dead center you have to turn the motor over and right here on the passenger side wheel well there is a location to insert a 19 mil socket through here so right now we are on the crankshaft and if you can see right over here i can zoom in you can see that socket on the pulley and you know what let's take off this gasket right here it's just gonna help us show the pulley a lot better all right let's rotate it clockwise here just watch as we rotate the cam gear is moving as well this will make it easier if you remove your spark plugs to turn the motor over so one thing i want to mention right here on the cam gear when you see the up logo that means this is top dead center for cylinder number one and you also want to make sure you use your feeler gauge and make sure you use these little slices on the cam gear to make sure you're perfectly straight right now you see the number three which indicates top dead center for number three so you would check the clearances on cylinder three again rotating it clockwise now you see number four you want to rotate and adjust cylinder four valves at this point again guys stay consistent use the right side of the cam gear to check all the levels to make sure you are perfectly aligned you might have to adjust the pulley a little bit back a little bit forward in order to get everything aligned properly but as long as you stay consistent with this right mark here everything should be adjusted accordingly to spec so we're going to take our first gauge which is the 18 to 22 spec range this is the 20 and you can see there's play right now in these lifters so we're going to be adjust checking and adjusting this play on both the intake and exhaust side if there's play that means that's good that means it's in top dead center you see the other one cylinder two they're nice and tight all right guys we temporarily put the cowl back on and the cap like i mentioned before we cannot risk having any water it's supposed to rain the next day or so um, hopefully there's some times in between where i can come out here and finish the valve lash adjustment but right now we are going to go through all of them and check which ones are out of spec right now we checked cylinder number one and we know one intake valve is bad and one exhaust valve lash adjustment is bad we'll go through all of them first we'll write down the x's which ones are bad and then we'll just go and adjust those valves i don't want to adjust the valves that are good because i don't want to mess with any of the torque settings that they are currently set at so we'll leave those alone we'll just adjust the ones that need adjustment and if you guys don't know what's the purpose of a valve lash adjustment well the problem is if the valves are too tight you can cause a burned valve there's too much pressure on the valve when it's closing and opening in the cylinder so that can be a problem now if the valve is too loose that could be another problem because you will lose performance it won't open as much as it needs to open you won't get as much airflow coming in or exhaust gases going out and with a loose valve adjustment you will have more valve lash noises i was experiencing more noises when the engine was warm let's say i beat on the engine already everything's running hot that's when i would hear the lifters ticking more than ever when the, when the motor's cold and the oil is thicker at that point i don't really hear anything it's just when it warms up so are these the culprits that i've been having are these the ones causing the noise or will there be more we'll find out 
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is the second day now. We are having a gorgeous day this morning. So I went around and checked all the valve clearances on the motor right now, and this is what we are left with. All the ones with an X are out of spec, and what I mean by that is the bigger gauge fits in between here. So that is a problem. We got a lot of valves, especially on cylinder three, which all of them are out of spec. So right now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna adjust cylinder number three. I already have the cam gear selected to number three. That means number three cylinders in top dead center. And also when you're checking this to make sure that you are perfectly level, use the arrow, use the straight line that's on the right side of the cam gear right over here because that's gonna be the most accurate. On top dead center one, when the cam gear says up, there's one on the left and the right, but the following ones are only on the right. So to stay consistent, always use the right one on the cam gear to check the accuracy of your top dead center. So again, cylinder three, we gotta check all the valves. So let's again, look at the specs here. For the exhaust valve, we need 0.23 to 0.27. And, and also guys, I already adjusted cylinder one. Everything is good to go. You do need a torque wrench and 10 pound feet of torque to torque down the top nuts. I picked up this torque wrench in the local Harbor Freights. This is a Pittsburgh. It's a 3 8 drive, which is good for five to 80 pounds. If you use a half inch, you probably won't have the low torquing capability that you need. So definitely recommend this five to 80 foot pounds of torque. You can also get the uh, quarter inch but that's measured in inch pounds. So you can use both, whichever you prefer. It's, it's accuracy is uh, plus or minus 4%, which isn't the best, but you know what? I was gonna do this by hand and just tighten it by hand. That's what I did with my old car. And also just to let you guys know, when you are adjusting these, these uh, little screws on here, be very, very slow when adjusting it because the smallest adjustment is gonna adjust that gap accordingly. So don't go crazy turning it half a turn out because that's unnecessary and you'll get lost in the process and you're gonna have a harder time adjusting the valves. Okay guys, so we are ready to roll. We're gonna rock it up here with the iPhone which can give you a better close-up shot of exhaust valves number three being adjusted. So here we go. All right guys, so we're taking our 0.25 millimeter adjuster right here we're gonna throw it right in here and as you can see fits perfectly a small amount of drag if you can hear it let's check out another the second one same consistency a little bit of drag so the way to check if it's out of spec is you're gonna take the next gauge up and the next gauge up is gonna be a point thirty which is three millimeters more than the maximum spec allowed on this lifter here. So let's take a look at it again. Look at that. The 0.30, three mils over fits perfectly. Let's check out this one. Same problem. So cylinder number three is way out of spec. And you know what? Let's check out the next gauge up. Let's check a 0 0.33. 0 0.33 right here. Wow. Look at that. So we're six mils out of spec right here, which I don't know, I'm not an engine builder, but seems like a lot. Wow. So this one definitely needs adjustment. And now let's go one size higher. And this is a 0.35. Let's see if this one fits in. See this one gets capped out, doesn't go in, which is good because the more out of spec you are, the more engine damage you're causing, the more performance you are losing. So let's adjust this. We have to adjust this. And to adjust this, take a 10 mil, Pop it on the bolt right here. Put a flathead screwdriver on the top and just turn it to the left. So now we're just gonna turn this screw just a little bit to the right, just minimally. And let's tighten this back up. Just 
hand tight nothing too much because we're going to be adjusting this back and forth a few times so again now i'm jumping back to the point 30 because this is the first size up that shouldn't fit so let's see see perfect right now we tightened it up and the next size up from the recommended spec does not fit this is where we want to be we don't want the higher specs to go into this area so let's go and check the recommended clearance again which is the 0.25 right here it's the baseline and let's see if this fits it's fitting a little bit of drag here not too much a little bit more than I would like though I'm gonna loosen it up just a hair because the other ones were sliding a little bit less but we're pretty much on the money right here and again you see I barely turned that that nut so that's how slow and precise you want to work with this uh, adjustment Still a little bit too tight. Oh, there we go, actually. Now, that's pretty good. I mean, I, I'll, I'll be happy with that. That's that's pretty much perfect right there. So, a little bit of drag, not too bad. And again, let's check if the higher, the next level up gauge will go in. If not, we are done on this, on this lifter here. Yep, doesn't fit. Perfect. So, let's just hand tying that just a little bit while holding this uh, adjustment screw the problem with this is once you guys torque these when you're torquing them you're not holding that adjustment screw and when you torque it the adjustment screw might tighten on you a little bit so here's the torque wrench 10 pound feet of torque okay that's 10 pound feet of torque and now it's a tedious process because now after torquing it you want to make sure again that this hasn't changed that the clearance hasn't gotten tighter now let's see so again the point 30 which is the next size up won't fit which is good we wouldn't expect it to but let's just make sure that point 25 which is the recommended spec is still good after torquing it down perfect a little bit of a little bit of drag and again just to be extra safe guys you cannot be you cannot go wrong by triple checking everything as i'm doing let's check the next size up again it won't fit so it's torqued we triple checked it this side this one is all done so now we got three more to go on cylinder number three so we're going to repeat the whole step on this exhaust cam and then the two intake cams as well.
All right, guys, it was a tedious process, but we double checked, we triple checked all the valves. We rotated the motor a few times and checked the specs a few times because even though the first time we adjusted it, it looked right, the second rotation, third rotation, it was still out of spec a little bit. So at the end of the day, there's only one valve, which is cylinder four, exhaust valve, the last one. That one did not need any adjustment. We still torqued everything to spec, triple check the torque spec. So at this point, guys, we are ready to reinstall everything. And the first step to reinstallation, everything is clean up this mating surface. So I'm gonna use some acetone, wipe it all down. You will also need to clean off this uh, gasket maker right here and right here in order for the new gasket to go on properly and seal properly. So let's clean it up right now using acetone. All right, take a nice new blade. Just cut this off. All right, guys, this is the gasket maker that I will be using. As you can see, this is an old one and it's all dried up over here already. But on the bottom, I made a fresh cut and we got some fresh gasket makers. So we're gonna put some right over here on this area. Now, we already got the new gasket for the valve cover. It comes in a kit. All the links for everything I use today will be down in below affiliate links. So if you wanna support the channel, if you're thankful for this video, go purchase anything on eBay, use my link and we'll get a little bit of commission much needed during this time. So let's pop this back in there and we'll start reassembling everything. All right, guys, a lot of YouTubers won't be able to show you this because I have a spare head right here, but this is the basic concept of valves. They open and close to release the exhaust gases out or to bring in the fresh air in. So the amount of movement this valve is gonna move depends on your valve lash adjustment. If your clearances are too big and you hear knocking on the valves, that means the valve is not opening also as much as it could be. So if it's an intake valve, you might be not bringing in as, as much air as you could to increase horsepower. If it was an exhaust valve, you're not opening it enough to release the exhaust gases out to bring the new fresh air in. So you will lose performance on a loose valve setup. Now the problem with a tight setup would be that the valve might open actually too much and then it's gonna get slammed back down by the valve springs. So that's gonna start damaging the seats over time and the seats are the mating surfaces between these two areas. Also, the problem is when you open this up too much with tight clearances, let's say your piston is traveling and this opens up way too much. There might be contact between the piston and the valve itself. So that's why it's important to check your valve lash adjustment as soon as it starts getting noisy or if you want to be just safe do it at the routine maintenance minder services guys thank you for watching hopefully you guys found this do-it-yourself tutorial very informative hopefully it's gonna rank one of the top ones for the eighth gen civic on youtube so make sure you guys smash the like button to support me to show some appreciation for this long difficult video and i'll see you guys peace i ain't here for the money i ain't here for the fame so it might be nice to own a jet plane i'ma do it all for you come along and see it's true but the world is pretty cold you might need a sweater too i'ma put a ride on ya get from california trying to make it in life in school they never taught ya dreams of my own i've been working from home i can do it on my own but sometimes it gets